Hello and welcome. On today's video, I'll be showing you guys how to build your first base in V Rising. This is a step-by-step -step tutorial to give you pretty much the information you would probably want to hear or know uh, the first time you build a base in this game. All right, so as you can see, I'm currently at the part of the quest line where it says construct and interact with Castle Heart. I've done everything before that. Um, so I'm just going to press B to open up the tray and place my Castle Heart. Castle Heart is starving. I must feed it. So in order to feed the Castle Heart, I need to transfer this blood essence. I can press the E key to do so. Makes it a lot easier. Looks like this gives me two hours and 39 minutes. Uh, the amount of mileage you'll get will vary depending on how much essence you put inside and it'll also vary depending on your server settings. So now we need to place some floors. So I'm actually going to place some rough floors. I'm going to place just three and then protect your territory with palisades. So uh, as far as the palisades go, um, we can only really place palisades in areas where the ground has already been kind of established as our territory if that makes sense so you see how like we have the rough floor there um if i continue and i go all the way around in a square i can place my palisade walls along that square since we don't have regular castle walls yet uh, we want to make sure that we are covering ourselves from the sun now uh you can't really get that with your walls by themselves uh, instead, we're going to have to place something like a wooden coffin, which we get after placing our first three palisades. So I'm going to place my wooden coffin. I like to place it right near the heart so that, um, you know, if I put anything else important in that area, it can all kind of just be easy to access. And of course, make sure you uh, go into your coffin and then back out so that that coffin is recognized as your coffin. And I'm going to put down this mist brazier here we're gonna put the bones inside all right so let's continue adding these palisades i'm gonna put down a palisade entrance it doesn't really matter where you put this entrance you could put it in a corner or like in the front or wherever um now mind you this isn't like a tutorial on like pvp strategies as far as placing your first castle and stuff like that um so your decision making might be a little bit different on a pvp server uh right now i'm just playing on a local save just for a demonstration so uh, i thought i should just mention that here all right so now we have our palisades put up and we are protected from the sun uh, I'm going to make sure to put my palisade gate here. Now, I usually start off with a square like this, and I try to place the square somewhere in, like, kind of a, a center spot on the plot so that I have a little bit of space to, like, branch out and go out maybe this way, for example. In this case, I might go in this direction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place foundation. I'm going to put down some rough floors just to uh, kind of make sure that no trees grow back in those areas because if you don't place your floors early uh, trees and um, different uh, things will just kind of spawn in that area especially things like wildlife for example they'll respawn in that area so make sure that you um, make sure that you do that all right so now that we've done that we need to place a small chest so we're going to go to production then storage and place our general storage. I have a Haunted Knight small chest from the DLC. Uh, let's see, construct and interact with a sawmill. So I like to start with two chests because you want one chest for like, you know, general materials. So things like, you know, wood and stone and whatever. But you also want another chest for things like, you know, maybe copper coins or research or fish even, because we're not gonna use fish until a lot later. Um, you know, same thing with like rats and, and hearts and things like that. So if you're not going to make vermin salves, just put it all there. And then my second chest I usually use for generic materials. So, you know, kind of like the stuff I have in my inventory right now, but I'm not going to do that just yet. Um, cause we are still constructing. So I'm going to go to production crafting. Uh, so it looks like we're going to need to make a simple workbench. Now, mind you, we need the sawmill. So we're going to go to refinement. Um, so we're going to place one sawmill here and we're going to also place one 
furnace. So we're going to keep going. So we're going to construct and interact with a simple workbench. So we're going to have to wait for um, eight planks. So we're going to wait for those eight planks. And then uh, in the meantime, I'm going to go gather some stone. Something else I want to mention really quick is to make sure that when nighttime rolls around, you turn off your mist brazier. Bones are pretty scarce early on. Um, so make sure that you do that so you're not wasting your bones. I'm just going to check the sawmill. Looks like uh, we're about four planks in, so we still got to wait for some planks. Uh, throwing wood in, like throwing in all your wood isn't necessarily a terrible idea for the first round that you've gone out and gathered stuff. But remember, you need regular wood, uh, not planks in order to build these palisades. But we're not going to have these palisades for long as long as we keep progressing. So, yeah, I'm just going to wait for the planks. All right. So now I'm going to get my eighth plank and I'm going to place down the simple workbench. Now, remember, that's in production and crafting. And I'm just going to put it right next to the furnace. Now I'm going to interact with the simple workbench. All right. And then I have to increase my gear levels. So we're just going to make these pieces of gear. And once it's done, I will be claiming them all. And it looks like I need a blood ring. I don't have enough essence for a blood ring. Now, something to keep in mind is that you want to make sure your castle heart has plenty of blood because it would be very annoying if you were to leave, uh, you know, maybe run out of essence while you're gone and then suddenly get a prompt saying, hey, your castle's starving. You might want to feed it. And then you try to head back to your castle heart and either it's not there anymore because it's been demolished by some other player or nothing in your castle is running. So you want to make sure that you at least fill the castle heart. Like think of essence as like fuel. Uh, so if you don't have the fuel in the castle heart, then obviously the castle can't run. All right. So the next part I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, get some blood essence real quick. All right. So now that we're back at our castle, I'm going to build myself a blood bone ring. But yeah, so your main thing when you first start out is you want to make sure you have a flow between uh, crafting, gathering and, you know, fighting essentially. So kind of evening out your time between those three things can definitely be good uh, in the early game, especially when you first start. And remember, uh, you know, you don't have protection from the sun with these palisades. So uh, I try not to build too many palisades. In fact, uh, part of the reason why is that you're going to have to tear them down anyway. So by the time you tear them down, that's just a bunch of resources that you could have, you know, not placed, if that makes sense. So that's why I um, highly recommend maybe placing down some foundation, uh, maybe not too much foundation, but I'd say about maybe twice the size worth of foundation. Uh, should be placed around your castle. So you see how like this has like nine squares. Uh, I think another nine squares on this side would not hurt. I don't recommend clearing out the entire plot immediately just because you're going to need a way to leave your plot without burning in the sun. So just kind of keep that in mind. I mean, unless you're placing multiple mist braziers on your uh, plot, which I do not recommend because they use up so much of your resources, um, especially in the early game. You know, just make sure you're kind of keeping that in mind as you kind of go out and about and start destroying stuff. So I usually designate one area for living, another area for chopping. And another reason why I don't place a lot of foundation early is because I want to make sure that the resources on the untamed squares, if that makes sense, the untamed tiles, are respawning and they won't respawn if you place down the foundation. So make sure you're not clearing out the entire plot right away. Um, unless you're like able to progress very quickly. And you know, obviously if you, if you know what you're doing, I mean, I don't even know why you're watching this tutorial, <laughs> but uh, either way, um, just kind of keep that in mind. So you're not wasting your time there. All right. So now that we've done that, uh, you know, you're going to have your blood carrier and stuff like that. And this is the part where you start going through the menu, you start tracking, you know, you like, oh, okay, we're going to track the, you know, alpha, the white wolf. And then of course, you know, you can defeat the boss and then uncover the knowledge and all that. So I'm just going to go through that real quick and then I'll come back here. 
So now that I've come back to my base, I want to point out something. Uh, it's probably a good idea to have a couple of entrances when you build your your first base. Uh, I know we're only starting off with a small square, sure. But uh, depending on what direction you come in from, you want to make sure you can get in quickly, especially if you're um, trying to escape more vicious creatures outside. So like if, for example, uh, for example, if you happen to come across like a like a golem or a trent or something that maybe you didn't notice before, you want to make sure you're able to slip into your castle very quickly. All right, so now that I've hunted down the three different V-Bloods, I've also uh, unlocked the research desk. So now I'm going to go to castle, then production, then research, and we're going to place our first research desk. All right, so now that I've gotten my paper, I'm just going to place my research desk down. Now, I tend to place the research desk uh, probably somewhere uh, in maybe this tucked corner here. You can place it kind of close to the entrance and it's not going to block it too much. Um, so now that I've unlocked that uh, and I've interacted with it and all that, I can just claim this reward. For sure. And now I have to discover a way to refine hides into leather. So uh, that, of course, is the quest now where I have to go and kill uh, Keely the Frost Archer because she unlocks uh, leather working and all that good stuff. So uh, the next thing, too, is I'm going to check the castle heart and see what it needs. So it says upgrade the castle heart to level two to interact with it. So obviously I'm going to need some leather. We're just going to interact with the castle heart and I'm going to upgrade it. So now that I'm upgrading it, it's going to give me a higher floor limit, a blood essence, higher blood essence limit and a higher servant limit. Well, actually it gives me a servant limit. So right now my servant limit is four. So if I upgrade and of course the floors is 50. My place of power has evolved. So now we have five servants and then 140 tiles that we could potentially place. And of course, I'm going to put a little bit of extra essence in there because why not? So I'm going to go and uh, kill the boss and be right back. New knowledge acquired. All right. So now that I've killed Keely, it will unlock my blueprint. So I'm just going to head back to my castle. All right, so now that I've completed that quest, I'm going to complete a castle room by laying down floors and constructing stone castle walls around it to generate a roof. So the way that the roofs work in this game is that when you place down your foundation and then you surround it by a wall, the roof just automatically appears, kind of like what it suggests here in the description. In order to place um, these castle walls and foundation, uh, we're gonna need stone bricks now in order to get these stone bricks you're gonna have to use a grinder and we're gonna have to fit that into our little square here so i'm gonna go to production then refinement and then i'm gonna put down a grinder it looks like i need whetstone for the grinder all right so i'm gonna place down my grinder now we can fit the grinder in several different locations i'm gonna turn off this mist brazier because again i don't want to waste my uh waste my uh cover here from the sun and it's easy to forget that, so, you know, just kind of keep an eye on it, guys, if you can. Now, at this point, we should have both the grinder and a uh, leather working station uh, placed. Um, we could move this closer and then maybe move this coffin over here. Uh, and that could be opening up a little of extra space because you can always walk inside of here just to uh, get to the sawmill. So I'm going to place down my tannery. My tannery is going to go um right right over here so now that i've placed down my tannery and of course you know you gotta make sure that your tannery is you know doing tanning things uh i'm just gonna have that going on i also have the blood press available to me uh that's another um important part of our castle build but because i am more focused on the grinder right now we're just gonna place a bunch of stones in there actually just like leave my base go hunting do a bunch of stuff you know gather materials and more materials and things like that and then i would come back to uh, a grinder full of items so yeah let's do that oh by the way one other tip is uh, and i this isn't necessarily castle building focus but if you have a 
um, if you have a bunch of rats, let's say you're making uh, vermin salves, right? And you wanna craft some vermin salves. Obviously we don't have a alchemy station yet. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go to crafting. I'm gonna, you know, make sure I have the items in my inventory that I need, right? And what you can do is actually queue up to make that. Uh, vermin salves or any other item that you're trying to make on hand. And if you hide in your coffin while that's happening, not only are you safe from the sun, but the crafting process actually continues while you're in the coffin. So if you wanna, you know, go get a drink or something as this is happening in the early game, this is definitely the way to go. Now, mind you, every server is different. So if you're on a server that, you know, someone else is hosting and they have their own settings, the crafting and grinding process might not, you know, the refinement process might not take this long. I'm just showing you this as is, right now because this is kind of like the default so most people when they play the game they're just kind of playing from the default so i just wanted to give an idea for how long it actually you know takes we're going to start placing some castle floors now at this point we don't have any kind of uh specialized flooring yet so it doesn't really matter what kind of flooring you're placing if that makes sense so i'm just going to continue to place my stuff here and then we're also going to take this time to overwrite what we've already done inside of our palisades here now the reason why i'm doing this is because i want to prep so that when i build the castle uh everything is covered so in this case uh i'm also going to make my castle a little bit bigger so i'm gonna have this whole outside area uh, I gotta clear this brush. So now we're placing our first three walls that we've placed. Now, remind you, just a quick reminder, uh, we would get this from the castle tab, then walls, and then you go for castle wall. Uh, there's only one castle wall type that you can place, and the reason for that is because there's plenty of wallpapers you can eventually uh, change stuff to. But the idea here is that I don't want to remove any part of these palisades until the entire area is completely uh, engulfed in our safe zone. So in this case, I'm going to just kind of add more castle flooring. So notice that while I'm building, the sun is coming up. So now that the sun is coming up while I'm building, I'm a little bit more protected because there's more walls. Um, but I preferably want to build uh, in a way where having the walls right here obviously creates a area of shade. So I don't even need the mist maker to be on, like it's not on right now and I still have shade in this area. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna continue and close off this castle. I wanna make sure I place a door here uh, before I forget. So now I'm gonna place my last two. And when I place that last one, suddenly, my entire castle is now indoors. So the only thing I would have to do now is place my door. So I go to castle gates and you place the door. And of course I can also replace one of these back uh, areas with another door if I want to. Uh, I recommend maybe putting one on each side if you have entrances or exits from each side of your castle. Um, part of the reason is that it just kind of makes it easier to navigate and leave your castle without much... Uh, upset if that makes sense so maybe having three entrance and exits might not be the worst of ideas and then now what i do is i try to disassemble uh the walls and palisades and things like that now something uh that's kind of important when it comes to building our castle Yet which by the way i'm going to uh, finish that accomplishment there we're going to also um start moving our crafting stations around so for the first one i'm going to use this corner uh we're gonna put down our sawmill now this would also be a decent time to go back and maybe add uh, more crafting stations so it's usually when i i enclose the area is when i start building extra crafting stations so we're gonna go and make another sawmill and we're gonna put a second sawmill down right here uh now sawmills and grinders are both part of the workshop part of your castle if that makes sense so you want to make sure that you're putting them kind of close to each other because they're going to later uh benefit from the same bonuses and you'll see what i mean by that in a bit so another two items that we're going to pair together are going to be the uh forge 
So we're going to make sure that our... Well, actually, our furnace, right? We're going to put our furnace here. And then we're also going to put our um, simple work table here. Or sorry, our simple workbench. Now, the reason why is because I want to turn this into a separate room. So rooms are very important in this game. So if you notice, if I interact with any of the workstations right now, uh, it'll show that it is in confined castle room. It considers this entire castle to be a confined castle room just because there's no areas leading to the outside. So you want to make sure that uh, you are abiding by that idea so that you're able to fully benefit off of the speed of the new crafting, if that makes sense. And we're going to go and create some more walls, actually, and door walls. So I'm going to partition this. I'm going to put a partition between these. And we're going to put that there. And of course, I'm going to put a castle entrance in between. Now, the reason why I'm putting a castle entrance is because I want to make sure that the room I have gets the benefit so right now if i interact it still gets the benefit because it's being counted as the entire like the entire castle is being counted as its room uh but if we close them off like this uh we get the same effect and the reason why we close it off like this is because later on we're going to need different kinds of flooring so if you notice when you interact with these it says uh has matching floor so like i would need workshop flooring for these so that's why i grouped some of these together so um let me see if there's any other examples i can see right away so another thing too like the alchemy stuff right so the blood press would count for alchemy and the blood press would be in uh alchemy flooring so if you have any kind of uh, you know, or even even something like the vermin nest. So if I hover here and you look at the icons, like the blood press says alchemy lab, the vermin nest also says alchemy lab. So if I wanted to place a vermin nest, I would place a vermin nest here, and that would also count as part of the alchemy lab. And as a result of that, um, I would just close out the room. So uh, research tables don't really need anything like that. Uh, they look nice in the library especially, but they don't really benefit from any kind of bonuses or anything like that because the stuff you're using is just stuff you've scavenged. It's not like you're processing materials. The only time you're going to be needing uh, materials that are like paper related that are being processed is like when you eventually do get the library flooring and you can make the paper press. Uh, but you don't unlock that until later, so that's not something we worry about right away. Uh, next, we're also going to make like a way gate. So for our first teleporter, we're going to need gem dust, blood essence, and grave dust. So let's see if we have any of that. So we're gonna, I'm gonna quickly check my inventory here. Looks like I have some gems, but I don't have dust, but I do have grave dust. The gem dust I can get by putting gems in the grinder and, uh, of course, I'm going to need some more blood essence. So let me put these gems in the grinder, see, see how much I'm able to get from that, and we will see the outcome. All right, so now that I've gotten my gem dust, I'm going to place down my castle way gate. Now, I like to place the castle way gate near the entrance and exits of my castle. Um, in this case, I have several, uh, so we can pretty much place it anywhere. I think I'm going to place mine... Uh, maybe right over here in this corner since this corner is closest to the road up here so yeah uh, whatever I'm putting together guys obviously I, I feel like maybe this goes without saying but I'm gonna say it anyway uh, you know you don't have to build your castle exactly the way I do I just think that you know there is some value to different ways of building um, now I could place these chests here to kind of separate uh, each one a little bit. So, okay, I'm going to work in the workshop. All right, cool. I'm in this area. Um, but usually I try to avoid putting my storage containers inside the actual rooms that things are being refined or crafted. Uh, I try to keep it in like a centralized area and then just build everything around it. So for example, if I have this, uh, it, let's say I build this out into an alchemy lab, right? And I put down my walls here. So if I, um, let me move this over. So if I add down my walls, 
and you know maybe i you know close it out now i'm not going to finish this up but uh, maybe I close out the wall. That's a separate room, you know, then that's another room I'd have to go in and check and see and notice we also have the forge room and things like that. So, uh, well, actually in this room, in this case, I'd probably put a wall here. Um, but yeah, you want to make sure that you're uh, kind of placing your storage in a centralized area around the works like, and have your workstations around. Now, I'll, I think most people tend to put their uh, stuff in other places, um, but the the thing is you don't have global storage at least we don't have global storage in this game so not well not at the time of re this recording at least so because of that i try to keep my crafting uh sorry i try to keep my crafting supplies uh easily accessible uh but also kind of in the same vicinity so you know something like this might not be a bad arrangement um for example and I could just move my coffin over so that it's not blocking the area. Um, or I could just put all of my uh, coffins, sorry, all of my storage containers in a row here if I really wanted to. But yeah, this is something that you might want to think about when you're kind of crafting uh, your castle. So I just constructed a way gate. We're just going to interact with it. All right. And I'm going to claim. And now... For sure. I can build my stone coffin. Now the stone coffin obviously is just, you know, another, it's just an upgrade version of our current one. Uh, so I'm going to go to uh, production, dominance, then stone coffins, and then I could just pick up uh, whatever coffin I need. So uh, make sure that you place that. Oh, by the way, uh, one thing I forgot to mention is that when you are grinding your gems for the initial gems, gem dust, avoid grinding amethyst because you're going to need amethyst for the stone coffin. That's something I forgot to mention. All right. So now that I have the materials, I'm going to place down my stone coffin. I think I'm just going to put my coffin uh, probably right here near the way gate. And we're just going to claim. All right. So... Now we're just going to continue where we left off here. I'm going to add uh, more walls with some entrances. Uh, you could, if you want to be like super efficient with your pathing, you could make every wall a walkthrough. Uh, a walkthrough. Um, I mean, it's really up to you on how you want to set this up. But having multiple entrances per room uh, definitely kind of helps. So just kind of keep in mind. Um, you know, anything that adds ease of access or ease of mobility is definitely a good thing in this game. All right, so I've also gone and now killed Grayson. So Grayson is the first boss that gives you a flooring. So we're going to start with these workshop floorings so now that I've unlocked that. Uh, so I'm going to go to castle, the foundation, and then we're going to go to workshop flooring. We have three different choices here. I'm just going to choose the one I want best. Doesn't matter which of the three I choose. And now when I interact with these stations, whether it be the grinders or the sawmill or even this woodworking bench. Uh, so now I can fit this woodworking bench here if I want to, or um, if I want, I can move this around maybe and maybe have this grinder on this side and then put the woodworking bench over here. Uh, that's also a decent option so that you can just kind of grab from the grinders and then go to the workbench. The workbench, though, is mostly working with uh, wooden stuff, so... Um, I don't really worry too much about the workbench itself uh, when it comes to placement. In fact, that's something that is kind of like um, not really that important until you're building like crossbows and things like that. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of um, something to think about there. Now, notice that since I have the right flooring, not only do I have the confined castle room bonus, but I also have the matching floor bonus. Well, actually, something I'm going to point out that's really, really important, and this is like a, a common mistake that I've seen before, is what'll happen is that you'll have a person who, let's say they just built this, they don't build the frame of the door, right? If I interact, you notice that I do not get the matching floor bonus because it's catching it's basically detecting the entire castle like so this zone here 
right? Like around here. And then this zone in here are all connected as one floor. But if you separate the floors by going and creating one of these walls, like a castle entrance, now suddenly you go and interact and you'll realize, okay, it has the matching floor bonus. So that's something that's really important to keep in mind. So not only do we need matching floors, but we need confined rooms with only that type of floor in it. Now, if I really wanted to be, you know, uh, creative here uh i'm, I'm just going to show an example uh so let's say i wanted to uh maybe keep this flooring throughout the entire you know rest of the castle right just to kind of prove my point um if i were to go and add you know workshop flooring throughout this whole area not this area but the whole other area and i go to interact suddenly it counts as having a matching floor so that's something to kind of keep in mind uh, while you're building just make sure that you're uh, creating that door frame so that it always counts so that you don't have to go out and just kind of make everything the same flooring if that makes sense so for this next step I'm going to be placing down my coffins for my servants so I like to put them uh, kind of close together and having them all aligned the same direction is probably a good idea make sure you tuck it into the corner or tuck it as close to the wall as you possibly can because you're going to need to place a few of these. So if I were to place this here, uh, it looks good. And I'm going to place a wall now. So uh, you can fit two rows of coffins here and then just like put, you know, your wall down. Uh, in this case, I'm going to actually use like a door frame, right? And then I'll put another wall here. So now I've created an extra room. Now, the thing that's a little bit different with these servant coffins is that they don't have a resource that they consume other than the initial essence that you uh, use to convert the servant, which is, I think, 100 essence, if I remember correctly. Um, so this room, you know, has no matching floor. This room also has no matching floor because this workshop flooring isn't the appropriate floor. So if you're ever unsure of what kind of flooring you need for any kind of uh, crafting station, refinement station, or, you know, servant coffins and things like that. Uh, you can just hover over and you can see in the description, it says I need crypt flooring. So once I have crypt flooring, I can eventually come back here and, you know, add the crypt flooring in and my, uh, build will be appropriate. Um, this isn't crypt flooring. This is just regular flooring, but I just wanted to visually separate this so you guys can have that frame of mind, frame of reference. I like to keep the heart in kind of like a centralized place, uh, but I mean, you could you could put it places like here, for example. Just keep in mind that if you move the heart, it removes the ground underneath it. So maybe uh, be quick about it if you're going to do that, just so that you don't burn yourself in the sun and die a horrible, horrible death. Or someone else who's maybe chilling in your castle, like if you're playing with a friend, they could end up getting uh, burned uh, if you're not careful. So just kind of keep that in mind. But yeah, this is a pretty simple setup so far. Uh, we also have this tanning station, right? So for the tanning station, we don't get tailor flooring until much later. Um, I can't actually show those bosses because they're so far up the list. But until you get tailor flooring, you don't have to worry about this. The only thing is that uh, just make sure that it's confined in a room. And of course, we are getting that in confined room bonus because even though it's in the hallway here, you know, the castle is still enclosed, so it still counts. So just make sure that you patch up all the walls in your castle so that you don't have any areas or gaps that allow you to lose that bonus because um, even the stuff that you put out uh, in like the hallways and stuff might be fine. So I think leaving this leather working station here for now is fine. You could also put down your altar of recollection. Um, so if I were to take, oh, I have no space. Okay, hold on. So if I were to take my altar of recollection, uh, a good place to put that might be right next to the research table. So if I place this here next to the research, you know, these two things are relatively the same size, but, um, you know, it just kind of uh, fits well together there. I also don't need this mist brazier unless I'm building stuff outside. Uh, of course, the mirror is like an optional item that you can build if you want to like change your appearance. So we're just going to tuck that over there for now. And then um, I think the last thing to keep in mind is the mist brazier. Now you're probably thinking like, do I want to get rid of this mist brazier? I've closed up my castle. 
Well, no. We're going to head out toward the back of the castle. And uh, in our case here, we're going to place down some growing plots. So the thing about the growing plots is that early on, you don't have uh, anything other than exterior growing plots. You can only grow plots outside. But once you uh, once you unlock more and more stuff, you'll be able to place these plots indoors and then it, what you could do is you could put them in the hallways so that every time you go past you can just use your sword to uh gather materials as you're going from station to station just passively but in our case we're not quite there at that step yet so we're gonna turn on the mist brazier and then i'm gonna place some of these large growing plots now um the cool thing about the the plants in this game is that you don't need to water them and you don't need to you know kind of have any specialized sunlight on them so what we could do if we really wanted to is we could um put up some walls now we don't have foundations that can really uh do much here so we have to be a little bit careful um so for this example i'm just gonna kind of show uh you know kind of give an idea of what to expect now remember the sun rises in the east so if the sun is shining from this direction toward us uh putting your plants on the west side of the castle might actually make a little bit more sense uh just so that you're shielded uh you know during the daytime for most of the daytime now this doesn't work from every plot in every place it really kind of depends on where you place your castle uh, but that's just something i kind of go by and then of course uh, we can place our plants here so uh, in order to place these um seeds you got to make sure they're in your hot bar or on your tray and then you can just place it there and over time, this will grow and replenish, and then we can just keep chopping it down and get more and more resources. And of course, you know, since we're done out here, we're done doing our gardening work. Uh, and, you know, I recommend keeping it pretty close to the castle. We can just go inside and we won't have to worry about that anytime soon. So, yeah, I hope this gives you guys a basic understanding of probably some of the best methods i would hope to kind of set up your castle i'm sure there's going to be people in the comments who probably mentioned some of their own methods that are uh also very helpful and i encourage you guys to mention you know some of the things you guys do uh, especially if you're a more experienced player um when it comes to your start and how you set up your castle but i would say this is this setup here is pretty typical of what i normally do um i try to keep things close and then when i expand i try to account for extra space maybe i would recommend putting workshop flooring in the hallway early on uh just in case you want to move this or if you want to have extra grinders or something you can put them out here you know out and about if for some reason you wanted to do that um but yeah you definitely have your options you do want to make sure you're maximizing the space as much as possible all right so one other thing i want to mention uh, you know, I wouldn't build stairs this early, but if I really wanted to, I could, uh, let's say I have these stairs, right? Now, notice that the stair edge on the top here drops down a little further out than what's in here. So if we compare this to a wall, there's actually less space for this wall versus this one. So I'm going to take, I'm going to use an example here. I'm going to maybe grab uh you know a chest right which by the way these uh, other material chests and stuff that you have here uh, i definitely encourage you guys to maybe use these just to make things a little bit faster when you uh, organize and i still though recommend having them in a centralized place in your castle just to keep that uh you know that flow going all right let's take this material storage so i'm gonna take this material storage i'm gonna put it as far back as i possibly can and then if I want, notice if on this one, I can actually push it back in extra space. So that's something else to kind of keep in mind is that if you're going to do that, uh, if you're going to place stairs in your castle early, you could, in theory, just kind of use the extra space. This is just like a neat little trick. So if you have something that just doesn't quite fit, uh, putting it behind a staircase area uh, might actually be a pretty good method. So that's just another tip that I wanted to add in there. All right, guys. So that's pretty much it. As far as this tutorial, I wanted to make sure that I covered this. Uh, you guys voted on it in the YouTube community tab. So here you here it is. And I hope you guys enjoyed.
For those of you who don't know, my name is Shiloh Q. I'm a Shiloh's Quaintly Reaper and Guide to the Underworld. I stream three times a week on Twitch, Kick, and YouTube, and you can find me playing V Rising usually on Wednesdays. Feel free to stop by and say hello during the streams. I hope to see you then, and as always, Sholo out.